Welcome to the 2024 Chinese Grand Prix predictions. I'm Sagan, and today I'm alone, joined by no one, but here we are for the predictions. Once again, for the fifth round of the 2024 F1 World Championship. Yeah, let's go, let's go right into the spreadsheet, shall we? Okay, so since last time we equal in points, we're still, I'm still in lead by seven points over HX. It's not that big of a big of a gap, honestly, since considering it's like 24 races on this calendar. So there's 20 more <laughs> after four. So yeah. Um okay, I got Ajax predictions. My phone in front of me. So that's good. I'm gonna do mine. I'm gonna talk uh talk less this 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 one in uh because I'm alone obviously I don't really like to talk to myself <laughs> for obvious reasons anyways um shall we start with the qualifying uh which happens on saturday this time because this, uh as this year's sprint means that both the spring qualifying and the spring race happens uh before qualifying on saturday so that's good that's a separate event now and it doesn't screw up with the entire format too much obviously it could use some improvements <laughs> the reverse grids. But yeah. Um let's go for pole position with EJX. I'm gonna start with him. This uh, will be easier. He just has Max Verstappen, obviously. Uh, I didn't even need to, <laughs> I, I didn't even need to copy the format because it was already blue. Obviously, who else are putting in pole position, right? Uh obviously I'm posting in Max Verstappen now, but in Charles Leclerc. I'm I'm delusional. I, I I don't care. I'm just I'm just hoping for for a for a fight, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just still having this little bit of uh, little bits of hope that Ferrari may just randomly pick up the speed and actually match Red Bull on pace. In that in that case, there will be a amazing battle between uh, well Ferrari and Red Bull. I, I don't really want to say Leclerc and Verstappen because obviously Science is doing very really good now and Perez was very close to Max uh, in Japan. So so yeah. Um, this is my prediction because I'm just, I'm just always pitting Charles out of, out of Carl's and qualifying is just, this is very, way more likely, even though this season, Carl's has been doing very, very good and beat Charles in the consecutive sessions, but I still think that Charles is somewhat the better driver overall as the stats from their years together prove it. Uh, to this day, even if, 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 you know, if, sorry, even if this season would continue as it is right now with Carlos just ahead of Charles pretty much every single time, it would still be like Charles ahead of Sainz in pretty much every head to head there is, like race, qualifying, whatever. He's just like that. Like Charles has the edge over Carlos. I'm gonna put Charles in P1 as I'm, I'm just, I'm just a high on copium, I don't care. Uh, P2. Um, P2 is Perez for HX, and it's Max for me. This is probably so stupid for me, but I'm going for it. I'm going for, for Max P2 after he got four consecutive pole positions. Yeah, um, that, that's stupid. But let's, let's just, yeah, let's move on. P3 for HX is Charles Leclerc. And for me, it's Carlos Carlos Sainz P three. Technically, if if it's a Red Bull one two and Carlos gets P three, then still I get a point for this one. So it's kind of like playing both sides. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, P four for HX is Lionel Norris, which is a surprising one. I don't really feel like McLaren uh, will do great on this track. Honestly, it just doesn't really feel like it would suit them. But you never know. I mean, they. Last year in Singapore, they absolutely nailed it, and they almost, well, they got a P2 with Norris, but they still were in the hunt for the win overall for the Grand Prix. So yeah, um, good job from McLaren. If they do get a P4, um, my P4 is Perez, and I'm putting Perez in my top five in qualifying after, well, I don't even know where was the last time I did it, but, you know, why why wouldn't I? He did it really well in uh, in Japan, which was 
well, historically not the greatest track for him, and he almost got pulled from Max, which is a thing in itself. I mean, if, if you almost beat Max in Japan, it's already very impressive. And yeah, uh, last weekend I chose Press for the most impressive driver, from my opinion. And yeah, okay. yeah, P4, still a little P4, but still not like, well, for, for Red Bull driver, it still should be top to minimum aim, but P4 is still an improvement in my predictions. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. P5 for AGX is Carlos Sainz. Which makes sense. Two first the Red Bulls in top five. That's pretty much what most people are going to predict um, throughout the entire season. My P5 is Fernando Alonso. And I have, I have no idea why did I put it Alonso, but I just, I just liked how he was in Japan. Which I didn't feel like was the greatest track for Aston. I think they're going to do better on this track. And a silly little E5 for Fernando there. Yeah. Um, I believe uh, Aston can be the third fastest car. It's just, you know, they don't really have two drivers there. But that's a whole another topic. Sprint pole position for GX. It's obviously Max. It's why, why, why would it be? And for me, it's Max as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, same for a sprint win. Uh, it's just Max in, in the sprints that some, somehow just makes it, like, whenever it's a sprint weekend, Max just up and just puts, like, insane performance in, especially in the sprints. Um, and then just Grand Prix mostly goes his way as well. But it's just that the sprints somehow always go Max's way. Doesn't matter if it was, like, in before, uh, before his championship years. Well championship well, well dominant years I mean that 2021 was a was a pretty pretty good year for Max in terms of sprints yeah um let's move on to the Grand Prix we have Max winning for Ajax and for me as well it's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna predict Max to not winning Grand Prix that is gonna finish I think he's gonna finish I don't feel like he's gonna get another random break failure or whatever. I just feel like it's gonna get a pretty comfy P1 in China. P2 is is well yeah Perez for Egypt in the Grand Prix. And for me it's Charles. So pretty much Max overtakes Charles in for other race or maybe on, on lap one as he tends to do sometimes as he's, Max is one of the great starters in Formula One that we've seen so yeah, uh, P3 is for HX is Charles P3. And for me, it's Checo. So it's the uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty boring one. But it's, yeah, Perez is probably going to get a podium over Carlos. I feel like Ferrari won't have the speed of the Red Bull in the race itself, even though Ferrari's star management has been very impressive recently. I just don't feel like they have that that, I don't know, I just, that, that one little bit that they need to catch Red Bull in uh, tire management. P4 for, uh, or Ajax is Carlos Sainz, and for me as well, I don't feel like anyone's going go to go get a top four other than the Ferraris and Red Bulls. Pretty much clear ahead of everyone right now. Yeah, um, P5 is P5 for Rajix is Norris, sorry, it's Lang and Norris, and for me it's Fernando Alonso. Fernando Alonso stays in P5 in my prediction, so a little movement there. I just sw swapped the Ferraris and Red Bulls in my predictions, and AJ just swapped Norris with Carlos. Makes sense. Based on Japan, uh, his predictions probably would make more sense, but I don't feel like McLaren will be strong on this track. Just personally, that's my opinion. Fastest lap is for uh, AJ. It's Max Verstappen. Obviously, for me, it's Charles. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Charles because every time I do, I somehow get a point. So maybe <laughs> once again, I don't know. Let, let's let's see. Uh, least impressive driver, sorry, least impressive team. Um, it is for Ajax, it's Aston Martin, which is interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I genuinely didn't expect this Aston to be the least impressive team. They would. 
well, they would need to be like beaten by racing bulls. I don't even know what it would the like Fernando would need to struggle to get points in order for them to be the least impressive team because there's like no other way. I, yeah, I, I just I just don't see this. Um, but I mean, if it comes true, well, good for him. Least impressive team for me is. Um, hmm. I see my mouse, so it's going to be a bit of a spoiler. Um, what do I pick? Um, I haven't done a prediction before, I was just doing them on spot. I'm going to go with Williams. It's, I don't know, I just vibes, pretty much. Just, just pure vibes. Lisa versus Driver. Or, uh, ejects its last roll, so yeah, I kind of see the resemble between Aspen and Stroll there. It's just that Stroll has a bad weekend, like every single weekend, pretty much. And Aston, to be the least impressive team, they would need Lonzo to screw up as well. So, yeah, um, least impressive driver for me. I would go for. Hmm, we have a George Russell. I don't know. I just. Well, why not? Pure Vibes is, again as well. Most impressive team for GX is. I have no idea why, but. Good for you if this comes true. I mean, well, this is probably worthy of an extra bull prediction. If Sauber is the most impressive team, he deserves two points for this one, honestly. Most impressive team for me? Hmm. No. I'm probably going to pick Aston. Maybe also can sneak into the top four and Stroll can be in the top ten. So, of course, one point that would be a pretty good weekend for Aston. Most impressive driver for. AJX is Yuki, and yeah, Yuki kind of is expected to be in that 11, well, top 11 area at this point. He's pretty much best of the rest, with Stroll occasionally being out of the top 10, so Yuki can get those points and a lot of lot more points after DNS, obviously, as we saw in Australia. So, yeah, in order for Yuki to be the most impressive driver, Kevin would need to do more than that. His Grand Prix, and I don't really see that do all happening. Um, but fair enough, if it comes true, that's point for him. I'm gonna go with my most impressive driver as Trolls. I mean, pole position plus P2 in, in the race. That's all well, that's a pretty, pretty safe bet there. Actual prediction. Um, for AJS, it's two safety cars. I'm gonna do a slash VSC as well. I don't know if he wants to specify that. I'm just gonna go with this. If he wants to change it, he can always tell me. My actual prediction is gonna be, hmm. Well, what was it gonna be? Is it gonna be, hmm. Ah, uh, it's difficult. This is difficult. What is my actual prediction? Okay, I'm gonna go with no points for Toro Rosso slash slash boss. So, to two teams behind the top five teams in constructors get no points from the weekend. That's pretty much saying that no Holkenberg points, no Snuda points, no Magnuson points, and not even Ricardo points. <laughs> Those are pretty rare nowadays, anyway. Yeah, this is it for cool. Uh, sorry, this is for predictions for the Chinese Grand Prix. I'm kind of excited for this one, even though it's, uh, well, we kind of know the winner already. And is this first sprint? I'm not the biggest fan of sprints, but they bring some, some, uh, different energy to the weekend, obviously. So, well, I'm excited for that. And obviously for Formula One once, once again, well, yeah, since yeah, it's a two week break for most of these races at the start of the season, but then we get to the European racing, well, well European partner calendar, and then we have some double and triple headers there. And that should be more exciting. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from us moving forward. And until next time, see ya.